Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Khan and I'm a fourth year optometry student. So today's video is going to be over station two. It's gonna follow the same layout as station one video. So if you haven't seen that already, go ahead and watch it right now. I'll leave it right in this little area. So same as before, same disclaimer as before. First, I'm just gonna talk about the station. Then I'll talk about my experience and then I'll show you how to do it um, for my audio and visual learners who prefer just watching how I did it. So first for station two is a little different than station one because now you have a proctor in the room making sure that you are doing everything correctly and you're not putting the patient any harm whatsoever. Make sure you go on the website because the website gives you a layout of how the room is set and where they left all of the equipment. When you come into the room, you have about five minutes to lay out the room as you would like. So make sure you put it in the order that you would like to do the station in and then go ahead and read the rubric. There is a repeat rubric and I think that one's really important for this station particularly because this station has a lot of skills that can be repeatable. The repeat policy, if you don't know this already, um, you can repeat a skill but you have to verbally say that I'm going to repeat the skill. And when you repeat the skill, make sure to go back to the rubric and start from the beginning. So if you are doing Goldman and you just realize like the, the Myers just weren't lining up and you say you want to repeat the skills, you don't start by redoing Goldman. You start from, hi, so now I'm going to check the pressure of the eye. Um, are you allergic to blah, blah, blah. So you start the entire thing over. So for the station, you will be using the slit lamp for the majority of the time. So don't forget to ask for a view. Um, make it a habit. Every time you do a new scan, every time you um, do something new or add anything to it, just say to have a view. It takes one second and that way you don't mess up and finish an entire skill and realize that they did not have a view and then you have to repeat it and this is the station that many people run out of time for so make sure you constantly ask if they have a view to reassure yourself so because the station has a proctor in the room don't get frazzled because they're gonna tell you to do things so when they tell you that you should wash your hands for longer after you wash your hands they're like you know what go wash your hands again um pull back or do this and do that. They're just there to make sure the patient's okay and they'll tell you to do little things but those aren't docked from your points or anything like that and if they are, it's very, very minimal. So nothing that would make or break you. So don't worry about that. This is the station that time is extremely important for. You have to do a lot within 30 minutes. So when you're practicing, try to set a goal to finish the station by 25 minutes so that on the real day, you give yourself that five minute buffer. And this is gonna sound really silly but practice washing your hands thoroughly. I say this because when I was washing my hands, I guess I didn't do it for the full however long seconds and they made me redo it. And so even though that wasn't a big deal, that still took time and that still made me a little nervous because things are now not moving smoothly as they could be. So from my experience, I had a pretty good run. Um, the only thing that for me was, you know, the washing hands thing. I didn't do it long enough, so sometimes I had to go back and redo it because I wasn't, I don't know, I guess at the time mentally I wasn't like, I need to wash my hands. When I was doing punctal plugs, I couldn't put the punctal plug in the guy's punctum because it was too small. Um, but that was fine. If anything like that happens, at the end of the exam, you can type out what went wrong. Um, I typed that out saying, you know, it was I couldn't get it in. And so they rewashed it and they did let me redo it. So if that happens to you, you can just go ahead and do that. And I was able to redo it and no penalty was um, added to that. All right, so let's go ahead and watch the video. Hi, Mrs. Lee, I'm Dr. 726. And now I'm going to wash my hands for about 20 seconds and dry them thoroughly. Okay, so it has come to my understanding that everything that we're using in this station is already clean and disinfected except the slit lamp. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe down the chin rest and the forehead. Okay, and then you can stay sitting right there. I'm gonna go ahead and focus the focusing rod. So ideally on the board's exam, you would put the focusing rod right here. There should be a hole. And then you just adjust your oculars and adjust it there, but we don't have one on the slit lamp, so we won't be doing that. So go ahead and come forward, Mrs. Lee. What eye would you like me to do it on? Right eye. Okay, so go ahead and close your eyes. So I'm scanning the superior lash line. Looks very clean, no misdirected lashes, no debris open. 
I'm scanning the inferior lash line and lid margin. Um, lash line is very clean. Lid margin has some cap fiber movements. Go ahead and look up for me. Okay. I'm just going to open Punctum and now I'm scanning the inferior palpebral crunch, which looks very clear. No follicles, no fibula. All right, so go ahead and uh, close your eyes for me. I'm just going to your lid. And now I'm scanning the superior palpebral colon, which is also very clear. No follicles or papillae. All right, go ahead and open your eyes and look up for me. Now I'm scanning the inferior fulvar colon and scleva. Just mild injection. Go ahead and look to your left. Now it's getting the temple, bulbar collage, and sclera. No trace injection, no lumps or bumps. Go ahead and look to your right and do nasal, bulbar collage, and sclera, which has trace injection as well. Go ahead and look down. And now do the superior, bulbar collage, and sclera, which has trace injection as well. Go ahead and look straight ahead. I'm scanning the iris. I see flat iris open really big for me. Flat brown iris with no new vascularization. Okay, I'm now going to increase my mag and increase the light. Now it's getting the cornea. Cornea is very clear, no opacities. Going into an optic section. Corneal epithelium, trauma, and endothelium is clear and intact. And the temporal angle shadow is about the same size as the width of my beam, so I'm going to grade that a4. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. It's really this entire room looking dark. I'm going to go into the conical theme. And the highest mag, I think on board 16 is the highest you can go. And now I'm going to be checking for cells that are flare. I'm dark adapted, I don't see any. Okay, and now I'm going to be checking to see if there's any trans illuminating defects. And I don't see any. So go ahead and sit back. All right. So, Mrs. Lee, now I'm going to check the pressures of your eyes. Walter, what eye would you like me to do this on? Right eye. Right eye? All right, Mrs. Lee, so I'm going to be checking the pressures of your eye, and I'm going to put some numbing drops on them, okay? Do you have any allergies or anesthetics or dyes? No. Okay, good. Go ahead and look all the way up. You said right eye? Yep. Okay. All right, Mrs. Lee, you can go ahead and come forward. And then on the slit lamp of boards, you should have a retin filter, but for the slit lamp, you will not. All right, I am scanning the cornea. Cornea looks very clear. No SPK or any corneal opacities. And the tears are evenly distributed across the cornea. Very adequate to your meniscus as well. Very safe to do Goldman. You can sit back, Mrs. Lee. Okay, and I have this set at 10. And then I'm going to go to 10x. Go ahead and come forward one more time. And you're just going to look right here. Go ahead and give me three big points and keep your eyes wide open. Good, you can sit back. It is 14 millimeters mercury at something, 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 Mrs. Lee, that is within normal range. So you can go ahead and come back, Mrs. Lee. I'm going to check in to see if I have left any corneal imprints on your eyes. And everything looks very clear. You can sit back. All right, Mrs. Lee, I'm now going to be using this contact lens to assess the structures of your eye to see how well you drain this fluid called AP screener, okay? So first, I'm going to anesthetize the eye. Walter, what eye would you like? Left. Okay, 
Let me go. Go ahead and look all the way up for me. So I'm going to assess the cornea first. It looks very clear, so it's safe to do gonium. You're gonna feel slight pressure, but it shouldn't hurt or anything. And you might feel some little fluid draining down your cheeks. So do me a favor and look down. And then look up. Good, and then slowly look straight ahead. Perfect. All right, Proctor, do you have a view? Yep. All right, so now I'm assessing the inferior angle. The iris looks flat. And the most posterior structure I see is ciliary block. I am now going to be assessing the temporal angle. is also flat and most posterior structure I see is ciliary plane. I'm gonna turn down the brightness a little. Okay, and now I'm going to be assessing the superior angle, most posterior structure I see, I think it's glial spur. I'm now going to be assessing the nasal angle and the most posterior structure I see is the ciliary body. So go ahead and look towards your nose. Okay. You can sit back. Okay, I just leave whenever you're ready. Go ahead and come back forward. I'm going to scan the cornea again just to make sure that we remove any imprints. Sit back. All right, Mrs. Lee, I'm now going to be inserting a collagen plug into your punctum, which is where the fluid on your eyes drain out. This way, the fluid can stay in your eyes longer. It helps with dry eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it. Pronto, what eye would you like? Left eye. Okay, go ahead and come forward, Mrs. Lee. Okay. Wow, this camera quality. Really nice. So I guess you can't really get it on camera, but I'm grabbing the tip of the pencil here. There's no way you can see it. <laughs> kind of saw it when you pulled it out. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. So you should grab it like this. And a little bit of camera focused. So go ahead and look up to the left. And I'm just going to go down that little bit. Okay, so I left it there for about two seconds. Um, ideally, I would put it two millimeters down and then eight millimeters toward the nose. And then you can sit back. All right, Mrs. Lee, I'm now going to be putting in contact lens into your eyes. Proctor, what eye would you like the hard lens or what eye would you like the soft lens? Soft in the right, hard in the left. All right, so first, don't forget this. Adjust the headrest first and then go wash your hands. So BRB. <laughs> so now I'm inspecting the hard GP for any cracks or breaks and it looks very good. Just going to put a little bit of wetting solution on it. And here's a pro tip. Make sure everything on you is dry. 
and not too much wetting solution because if there's too much wetting solution, it will move toward the canvas. So go ahead and look down for me and then look up and then make sure you're good. Okay. This is the, you're going to feel that left one a little bit more than the soft ones that ones. Now I'm going to get the soft ones that ones. Make sure everything's dry and obsessive for any tears or breaks and it is not inside out. <laughs> All right, go ahead and look down and then up. Can I hold you a little tighter? Mm -hmm. Okay, give me a And then look down, left, right, up, down. All right, and then I'm going to put some flourishing. look down for me. All right, go ahead and come forward for me. Okay, so blink, blink, blink. Okay, I'm gonna go back to, and this is the part where you put your rat and filter in again. That should be on camera, okay. So I have the GP here at blink. So it looks like it's decentering inferiorly. Um, apically, it looks like there's more pulling inferiorly. Um, and mid peripheral has a little bit of a touch and there's excessive edge work. But adequate movement upon pulling and it looks like an interval prefrontal fit. And then over here, I'm gonna change the light back to white. And then it looks like the Soft contact lens has 360 coverage. And blink for me. Temporal movement is a 0.25. Nasal movement is about 0.25. Okay, see that? Okay, so that's gonna be about a two degrees rotation to the right. And then go ahead and look up for me. And blink, and then 0.5 millimeters on the up gaze. Up movement, and then look straight ahead. And I'm just gonna remove it, so go ahead and look straight ahead. Remove the GP because I'm gonna show you Go ahead and come forward. And you only have to, well, our rubric, you only have to check for stain and do what you do right. And that is the end of station two.